Today we're taking a look at the new 2023 Execute 30 EKO from Bear Archery. Just a reminder guys, head on over to mikesarchery.com to pick up any of our latest logo gear. We got plenty of hats and shirts as well as any gear you might need for your next adventure. Welcome back to Mike's Archery's YouTube and we are taking a look at the new Bear 2023 lineup and we have got their new Execute 30 EKO. Now this is a complete redesign from Bear and they've taken this bow to a new level with all new redesign cams, riser, everything is all new on this bow. So let's take a look at some of the basic specs on this thing. As always, Bear keeping it right here in the USA with all of their bows being made right there in Gainesville, Florida. The speed on this bow is coming to you at 340 feet per second IBO and the axle to axle on the XQ30 is obviously 30 inches. Now the overall cam to cam length on this bow is gonna be 35 inches, giving you a nice feel and a little longer feel to that shorter axle to axle bow. It's gonna help you aim a little better and also give a better shot out of this bow. The brace height on this bow is coming in at six and a half inches. Next, we take a look at the weight on this bow. Now, Bear does not have an advertised weight on this bow for this year. So when we took it out of the box and weighed it with everything on it, it's coming in at five pounds even. And as we took the dampeners and things off of it, we got it down to about 4.6 pounds. So this bow, not having an advertised weight, we're just gonna assume that it's coming in right there around 4.6 when you strip it down. So this bow is coming in a little heavier than they have in the past but that's gonna make an overall better feel in the hand and a little deader shot in the hand when you shoot this bow. So the overall draw length option on this bow with the new EKO cam is gonna to come to you from 26 inches on the bottom out to 30 inches on the top. Being a short axle to axle bow, it's gonna fit pretty much everybody out there, fitting most of you shorter draw guys at 26 inches, but then topping out at 30. If you got a long draw, this is not gonna be a bow for you. Bear has kept with their same weight options this bow is gonna to come to you with a 15 pound weight option. With a 70 pound max, you're gonna be able to drop this bow down to 55 pounds. And if you decide to order this bow in 60 pounds, you're gonna be able to drop it down to 45. That is keeping that 15 pound weight increment as they do on most of their bows. Now with the EKO cam, even though they've redesigned the look of it a little bit, it still has that adjustability of not only the draw length, but also that let off adjustability that they've had the last few years. You're gonna be able to set this bow up with 75 80, 85, or even 90% let off, just depending on what feels best to you. From here, let's talk about some of the features of this bow. Now, some of the redesigned features that they've come on this bow is from top to bottom, the cam, it looks different. Now, we did take one of the old EKO cams out. We compared it. The overall shape is pretty much identical, best we can tell from what the old one is, but they did redesign some of the milling, uh, and some of the bracing in that cam. It just gives it a little different look, but the feel is still there that they've had with the EKO cam. The other thing we noticed was a new module design inside there. They've changed some of the markings on that module, moving all the draw length adjustments to one side with your screw adjustments. It's just gonna make it a whole lot easier for the dealer, more visible, just more obvious as to what you're making those adjustments to. So from that standpoint, it just makes it a little easier to work on. Then you can still make that adjustment plus or minus with the draw stop to be able to change that let off on the cam. The other thing we noticed was they did do a threaded axle on these bows. So no more E-clips on those axles. You've got some Allen screws that thread into the end of the axle, loosen those up, slide your axles out. It's gonna be a little easier to make those shim adjustments if you need to make any adjustments to get the tune on this bow just the way you need it. The cam did also keep that limb stop. So if you like that rock solid back wall, you're gonna be able to you're gonna be able to put that limb stop on the EKO cam as you have in the past, or shoot it with the cable stop. It's just a personal preference and a personal feel of how you want this bow to shoot. Now, right off the bat, we noticed a new wider limb stance on this bow. Not only is it a wider limb pocket at three inches, but it's wider limbs coming off of that limb pocket at two and three quarter inches on the outside of those limbs. Now, that's just gonna give it a more stable platform, help you to aim better and just shoot better overall with that wider stance on this platform. The other thing we noticed with those new limb pockets, it did give it a nice sleek, clean, and even more of a tactical look on this bow. And those aluminum limb pockets just look great and are gonna perform also very well. Now, as they did redesign this riser completely from top to bottom, they did keep that level in the riser that they've had the last few years. So it's gonna allow you to do the setup and keep your bow level at full draw and realize where you're at 
when you're shooting this bow. The next obvious thing that we realized they had changed was the roller guard. Now with this new adjustable pivoting roller guard that they've got, you're gonna be able to move this roller guard not only left and right to adjust that torque on your cams, but also forward and backwards. So depending on where you put this bow on the weight, as you back those limb bolts out, it's gonna move where those cams are. You're gonna be able to slide that adjustment in or out just so you've got the perfect torque, perfect tune uh, with this cable slide, no matter where you're at in the draw cycle and wherever you're at on the weight of this bow. Now, the next thing we noticed that they changed for this year was the grip. Now, this bow is gonna come with two grips, but it's gonna come with the new Grizz grip, which is a new redesigned centerline grip it's got a great feel and a great look to it. Nice ergonomic feel in your hand, but they've also included that Versa grip that they've had in the past. So they've got that thinner, more plastic grip that came in the past. You're gonna get both those grips depending on your shooting style. It's gonna allow you to take those on and off and get the perfect feel out of this bow for you. And one of the other things we noticed was a new stabilizer bushing, both front and back on this bow. It's gonna allow you to mount, obviously, your stabilizers and lock them down solid but whether you want to run a sidebar or a back bar and also your front bars, you're going to be able to place those in here, lock them down solid on that new bushing system and have just a rock solid feel allowing you to balance this bow in any way that you need to. The other thing they changed was the new SMS shock management system and they've got new riser dampeners built into this bow that are out toward the top and bottom limb pocket. Clearly that is a vibration center on all the bows as we have seen a lot of the flagship models putting some dampening systems out towards the upper ends of the limb pockets to just give a better feel and a deader shot in your hand. Now, some of the things they kept the same was their vibration dampening systems in the limbs and also their single string stop mount. Both of those are gonna give a nice dead shot, take some vibration out of the bow. It just helps to give an overall better feel to this bow. They did keep with the double rest hole system as we like to see and Bear has done for years, just allows you to lock that rest in place knowing it's never gonna move if you've got both those rest bolts on there. Now, one of the things we didn't notice on this bow and we were kind of hoping Bear might go that direction was possibly using an integrate system or the core mounting system from Hamski. We were hoping to see that so that they could maybe utilize some of those inline technologies that are out there on some of the other flagship models, but it appears that they chose not to do an integrate or the core system on this bow. So you're just gonna have to mount your standard rest and standard sight mounts as you always have. Not really changing a lot there, but it just eliminates you having that option of some of the newer technology that's out there in accessories. From there, Bear offered a lot of color options on this bow, uh, giving a few new color options with stone in one of their solids, uh, which this flagship model came to us in, but you've also still got the olive option there. And then in the camos, you can get this bow in a Fred Bear, fully Fred Bear camo, or the throwback tan, or a throwback black with the Fred Bear limbs. You can also get this bow in a Mossy Oak Country DNA, or a Mossy Oak Bottomlands, which is a really cool throwback pattern. And you can also get it in a Veil Whitetail camo. Now, one of the things we did notice is they did not offer all these colors in left-handed. So if you are one of those guys out there that's a lefty, you're gonna be a little limited on the Execute 30 as to what you can get. So the ones that are available in right-handed only is going to be the olive, your Mossy Oak Country DNA, your Bottomlands, your Veil Whitetail, and also your Throwback Tan. So if you were looking to get into one of those colors and you're a lefty, sorry guys, you're just gonna have to pick a different color to get your bow. Now the next thing Bear did is they brought the price up a little bit on this year, and we have seen price increases across the market with everything, and that is no different with their bows. So their flagship models are coming to us in 2023 at $11.99. Now we realize that's a step up from what Bear has done in the past. Typically they have been at $9.99 and kept it under $1,000. So now that Bear has stepped this up to $11.99 and since we have seen price increases across the board, it's gonna be higher end and closer to what we have seen out of some of the other flagship bow companies like Hoyt and Matthews, PSE, Bowtech, Elite. All those guys have been in that $1,200 range in last year's models. So it'll be interesting as we go forward 2023 to see if those prices jump up a little higher or if they still continue to be in that $1,100, $1,200 range and how well this new bear will compete with those bows. I think they've got a great package here and it's gonna be a great shooting bow, but it'll be interesting to see how it competes with those other flagship models. From here, let's step back to the range and take a look at this bow and give you a breakdown on how it shoots as far as noise rating as well as the speed rating going from 350 grains out to a 500 grain arrow. And as always, we'll be shooting this bow on 29 inch draw length at 70 pounds 
with 90% let off. So we've stepped back here to the lane and we've got the Execute 30 here. And we're gonna shoot this over the chronograph, give you a breakdown of all the speeds, uh, as well as the noise rating on this bow, all the way from 350 grains, all the way up to a 500 arrow. And uh, as usual, we're shooting this bow on 29 inches uh, at 70 pounds with 90% let off. And uh, we're just gonna see what kind of numbers this thing shoots here. So let's give it a shot. All right, so we always start with that 400 grain arrow. And with a 400 grain arrow, we got 305 feet per second. Now, that's pretty fast. And we knew this bow, even IBO in at 340, uh, is putting out quite a bit of energy with a 305 feet per second with a 400 grain. Now, when we dropped it down to 350 grains, we got this bow to shoot 323. And then as we went up in weight with a 450 grain arrow, it dropped down to 290 feet per second. And with a 500 grain arrow, it dropped to 275. So losing about 15 feet per second, give or take uh, from top to bottom every 50 grains, which we thought was really good. Out of this bow, it's, it's quite fast, uh, putting up some really good speeds. Uh, and I'll tell you right now, if you go over and watch the other Execute 32, uh, they IBO the same. And after shooting a bunch of arrows through these, both these bows, uh, the speeds came out the same. Now we may get a foot faster, slower here and there, but we, we try to average those out and give you a base number of what we feel is a fair number on these bows. Uh, so really and truly they're shooting the same. But the one thing we did notice that was different is the draw cycle. But let's take a look at what the noise rating was on the 30. Uh, and it came in at 94.1 decibels. So really and truly, and we knew when we shot these bows uh, the first time when we first got them in, uh, they were quiet, uh, and it's reflected in the decibels. So, you know, that's a, that's a quiet shooting bow. Um, and we're real pleased with what bears done there. So if you're looking for a quiet hunting bow, this new execute line is definitely something you want to look at. Now the draw cycle on the 30 is a little harsher uh, and that shorter axle to axle as it comes over, it just drops off into that 90% let off a little harder. It's not a bad feel overall. I think it's a good feel, it's smooth getting there. It just that last hump into that drop off. Now, if you shot that on 85% or even took it down to an 80% let off, you're certainly not gonna feel that dramatic change at the end. So keep that in mind. It all depends on where you set this bow and how you wanna shoot it. You can get a lot of different feels out of it, but at 90%, it's really smooth coming back and then drops off pretty hard into that 90% let off, but overall a great feel. Solid, steady, and again, if you put that limb stop on there, you're gonna get a rock solid back wall. And really and truly what I noticed with the 30 is even with the cable stops, it still had a really solid back wall, had a good feel to it. But when you put the limb stop on there, it gives it even a harsher or a harder back wall. And it just sits really solid in your hand. Uh, no creep whatsoever. Doesn't really wanna jerk out of your hand at all. Uh, you can really relax there with the shot and kind of pull through if you want to. Uh, overall, it's a great feel once you get the full draw. Now, after the shot, this bow is dead in the hand. And I know we say that pretty much on all bows anymore. These top flagship bows, they're all dead in your hand. Uh, there was just a, just a twinge of vibration in this thing, but it was very, very minimal. Once you set this up and get your sights and stabilizer and stuff on there, this thing's going to sit rock solid uh, and feel like nothing happened. Uh, when the shot goes off. So we're really pleased with what Bear has done here for 2023. Uh, these new executes are a great shooting bow and I think you're gonna see something here from Bear and they've been coming on for years, coming on stronger every year. And I think they've taken another leap forward to being able to say, hey, let's walk in and, and put this up against a Matthews, put it up against a Hoyt, uh, you know, any of those flagship bows uh, from Bowtech or Elite. I, I think Bear has got something here that with this wider stance, and the CKO cam system, that you can put this up against any other flagship bow out there and you're gonna be real pleased with what you've got in your hand. So if you're looking for a brand new Execute 30 from Bear for this year, be sure and give us a call here at Mike's Archery and we will get you set up with one.